Hi there, Will, just in time prepping. How is everybody today? Hey, today we're going to be talking about uh, something I really haven't heard too much about. It caught my attention, so I thought, well, why not? Let's do a video on this. So, the name of the video is What If? What if your flight is hijacked? Uh, we all remember 9-11 all too well. Uh, every time I think about going on a plane, I think about 9-11. I don't know about you, but it just stuck in my mind, that 9-11 uh, catastrophe. So, when I saw this article, I thought, well, you know, why don't I just pass this information along to my subscribers or whoever else might click on it and uh, give everybody some food for thought. So... I want to tell you, I, I got the info from uh, an article that was written by Tim McWelch, and he is a survivor, uh, a survivalist expert. So let's just kind of get along and, and go about studying what he has to say. It says, uh, what would you do uh, if you were flying and someone in the back of the plane were to yell to stay in your seat or we're going to blow the whole thing up? Oh, man, that would <laughs> kind of raise some red flags for me. I'm not sure about you, but for me it would. So that's what we're going to talk about. So uh, this may turn into a two-parter because it is quite lengthy, all the information that I uh, kind of wrote down to kind of remember to tell you guys about. So, uh, if that was to happen to you, A, would you stay seated? Or B, would you stand and face them? That was uh, two of the options you have. You could stay in your seat and hope that they don't harm you and see what happens. Or you can have the courage enough to make a plan and... Uh, help the plane get out of danger. So everyone remembers 9-11, and eh, it could happen to any, at any time to anyone, you know. I know we haven't had it happen since 9-11, but every time you get in a plane, you've got to think about it, or I do anyway. So when I saw this article, I, it just really hit close to home. So just imagine yourself uh, that you're in a flight from, say, Boston to L.A., and uh, all you have aboard this uh, thing is, aboard the airplane is uh, the airline crew, of course. You've got your pilot and all the uh, att flight attendants and whatnot. Then you have you, you have your significant other, and you have about 200 other passengers. So... Uh, somebody were to stand up in the back of the plane and yell, you know, hey, stay in your seats. If you move, I'm going to blow the plane up. What are you willing to do, you know? So, about halfway through your flight, like I said, the guy stands up and makes the an announcement. So, that's when two men at the back of the plane are holding maybe a knife or a box cutter. We all know about the box cutter thing, right? So they may have like a box cutter up to their throat or uh, any sharp object, actually. You know, uh, they couldn't get through the security gates with a box cutter or anything, so they would have to have a plan in place. You know, somebody outside the plane uh, in the runway area would have to somehow get it into the airplane for them, you know. And, yeah. If you know anything, terrorists can get anything done if they put their mind to it. So, what would you do? You know, you know, basically, if that happens, that the plane is going to be hijacked, right? Right. So, at this point, you don't know if the flight will change course or if they plan to just blow it up. You know, they don't. You don't know if they're going to hold the plane hostage or if they're going to just go ahead and blow the darn thing up. So, are there, how many, uh, you have to guess, you know, you're trying to think things through here. So, one of the things I would think of is, hey, is, is there an air marshal on board? 
uh, only air marshals could have a weapon on board. You know, that's the only that's the rule. You can't even have a handgun or anything in your carry-on because that would be detected at the security gate. So, at that point, uh, can you possibly use the plane as a, to be to call out? You know, make sure. Uh, see if your cell phones work, maybe your laptop, you know, because they're telling you to stay sat down in your chair. That's uh, that's the thing. They're telling you to stay seated or they're going to blow the plane up. So you have to just stay calm, basically stay calm and think, okay, um, I brought my laptop, you know, it's sitting on my upright or in my lap, you know, and I can uh, possibly get a message out, you know, or... Uh, Maybe you have your cell phone, you know, your cell phone's on you. They always tell you to turn them off. If you're like me, you don't turn yours off. You just turn it down, you know. So you might want to check to see if uh, you can possibly get out on your cell phone. So uh, another chance you might have is uh, maybe make a plan to subdue the hijackers. You know, maybe you've got this badge of honor on your, on your shirt saying, hey, I can do this, you know. So, uh, you if you did that, you would have to make sure that you had scanned the plane, you know, look around, see if there's any big burly guys on there, or maybe some uh, people that look like they're intelligent and might have have some, uh, uh, trying to think of the word here before I get too far along, is that they were would have enough... Uh, uh, experience of life, you know, to uh, more or less help you override the terrorists on the plane. So, uh, another thing is, is there any marshals? That's one of the things I already brought up. So, at this point, you know, you got to remember about 9-11. On one of the planes, the passengers did just that, is they got together as a group and they subdued the hijackers and kept the plane from crashing into the Pentagon, if you remember remember right. So here, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about some things to do prior to your flight so that if something like this were to happen, you would uh, be able to make a plan, okay? So, uh, A, you want to buy your ticket in advance. Yeah. I always buy mine in advance. It uh, comes in handy because you get a, a better deal. And pay extra so that you can board early. Uh, uh, at the ticket counter now, you can usually pay a fee and you get moved to the front of the line so you get on board early. I get on early because of my health, you know. I have bad health, so what I do when I check in is I just tell them that I can't walk all the way down to the plane, that... I'll never make it because I have an uh, uh, issue with my lungs. So what they did, did for me when I went on the plane was, hey, no big deal, you know. They brought somebody over and they plopped my butt into a wheelchair and piled all my carry-on luggage onto the wheelchair and my son was in tow at that time. So here he goes down through the airport pushing me and he's going pretty fast. But when we get to the gate, here's the, here's the thing. Because I was in a wheelchair and I was uh, handicapped, they let me go on the plane first. I got to go ahead of everybody, so to speak. Well, I'm finding out now that at the ticket counter, the people that are uh, regular passengers, if you want to board the plane early, they'll allow you to pay a fee to do that. So when you do that, what you want to do is you want to... Uh, Pick a good seat when you get on board. Some some flights will uh, have your seat number right on your ticket, right? Well, actually, when you, when you go to buy your tickets, if you're like me anyway, uh, when you're filling out the stuff to get your ticket, they bring up that diagram, uh, you know, on the online form, and it's asking you where do you want to sit, right? So here's the thing is, you want to sit in rows uh, between rows 15 and 20 because that's more or less in the middle of the plane and you can have the most visibility. Uh, also, there are exits 
over the wing. So the seats between 15 and 20, those are real easy to get to the exit windows, okay? So uh, most planes are that go from the East Coast to the West Coast are going to be Boeing 737s, okay? Those are the ones that you want to familiar, uh, familiarize yourself with. You'll want to, when you set up the arrangements online, get your tickets in advance, you want to uh, pick a seat between in rows 15 to 20 because those are the exit windows, and then you want to uh, pay a fee to uh, make sure that nobody's going to sit in the other chair there. You can pay a fee so that only you and your spouse are sitting there on, in the plane. So you want to do that so that there's one seat empty, and that's so... <laughs> I'm coming to that, okay? Uh, that's so that you can get your carry-on bag uh, in a nice, easy place to reach, okay? And another thing you want to do is you want to familiarize yourself with the plane. Like I said, 737s are usually the basic one that runs coast to coast and uh lost my train of thought again <laughs> so uh the layout of the planes where i was at so uh 15 to 20 then you want to look around the plane there should be a galley two galleys actually or two restrooms at the rear of the plane and one restroom room at the front of the plane and while you're looking at this, you know, you're getting on the plane, you're getting on early, you're looking to make sure that the two bathrooms are down there and that the one bathroom is up there. And then as the plane fills up, you know, you can keep an eye on those because you're in the middle of the plane. And what you want to do is uh, is look to make sure that they're empty, you know. If they're uh, being used, there'll be a little red thing on the door, you know. And if they're not, usually there's a green thing, but they're ajar a little bit, so... That's one of the things you want to look for because you're, what you're doing is you're training yourself to be situ, uh, situation aware, you know, your situational awareness. That's where we're going with this. Also on a plane, there will be a galley that is at the aft of the plane, and that's where they prepare the foods and whatnot. And then at the front of the plane, they have some sort of refrigeration and stuff, and that's where they get your drinks and stuff. So now you're starting to feel where you're at in the plane, and you're starting to feel a little bit comfortable, right? So uh, what you want to do now is make sure that you're in the in a good vantage point, and then when if you're traveling with your spouse or your significant other, always look, uh, book that middle seat. This is what I was telling you, and the aisles, and make sure that uh, one of you are on the window and one of you are on the aisle. What I would do is I would put my spouse in the window seat, then put the backpack in the middle, because uh, you want to. I'll get to that. You want to carry a backpack with you, and then you want to sit sit on the aisle seat. And the first thing you want to do when you get in that aisle seat, you want to lift up that arm and push it backwards so that you can get in and out real easily. Okay. Now the second thing we're going to come to is when you're packing. Okay, this is going to be. Oh, I'm already 13 minutes in. I can tell this is going to be a two-parter because <laughs> we got lots to cover. We're going to start talking about when you pack. This is prior to your flight, okay? Uh, when you're going to make your pack, you want to uh, make sure that you have your carry-on is usually a backpack. And then that's because the straps are easy, you know. You can pull it on while you're in the airport and carry it around. But also, when you put it in the seat beside you, you want to make sure that you can get to the, the strap easily, okay? So then you want to use the, uh, there's a pouch in the backpack, and you want to use that to uh, put in a carry defender plate. And I'll tell you why. You want to get the one that's a level uh, 3A, and it will, uh, it will go through security because it's made of hard plastic. And it can protect you from things like a frag or an edged weapon or even uh, physical strikes against you. So the plate weighs a total of 1.3 pounds, and it's really not going to tear you up to carry that extra uh, one pound just for your own personal safety. 
Then you want to uh, make sure the pack is easily accept, uh, accessible, as I said, and you want to make sure the kit is uh, always containing consistible items. You want to make sure that there's a flashlight and batteries in there. You want to make sure that you have some uh, those large zip ties to not don't hook them up because they're going to be handcuffs. So you don't want to hook them up. You want to just have them shoved down inside there. And then you want to make sure that you have duct tape in there. Sounds like you're going to have a rape kit to me, but uh, this all makes sense. But you want to have some duct tape in there. And then you want to have a few uh, ballpoint pens, Vicks, you know, the, the hard uh, plastic kind. Uh, Vicks are very durable, so I would think Vicks. I put a, like three Vicks in mine, you know, right up there at the top in that little bitty pouch. So uh, then you want to make sure that you have a tourniquet, a set of hemostats, and also some uh, combat gauze, and you want some pressure bandages in there. And so as you can see what you're doing now, you're kind of getting a trauma, a small trauma kit together. Excuse me. So now you've got the kit put together, this is what you're going to put in there. You're going to also put in there a pair of socks. And because I put a pair of socks in there so that uh, when you're flying that long distance, one of the first things that you do is you kick your shoes off so you can be comfortable. You want to make sure that you have extra socks in there in your bag because say you take your uh, socks off because you're going to take a nap or something or they're hot so you take them off. Well, you want to put the socks back on because uh, in the confusion of, of overtaking your high jackers and whatnot, you want to make sure that your feet are not bare. You want to be able to keep your feet free of any debris or something. Socks kind of deter that, okay? So after you get all that put together, we're going to talk about what you're going to do at the airport before you get on the plane. Now you know what's going to be in your backpack. Now let's go back to on-site preparation, okay? And 17 minutes in, so I'm going to try to get through this part, and then we'll uh, finish it up uh, on Friday, okay? I only got a little bit left here, and then we'll quit and let you guys kind of digest that. Yep, just this little bit's left. So at the airport, on-site, you want to make sure that you arrive early to get to the gate. This, and then that will let you assess the other passengers that are on there. That means you can look at them, see if possibly they would be able to uh, help you overtake uh, hijackers if that if the need be, okay? So you want to look for uh, uh, physical attributes to help assess the situation. So uh, you want to look to see if they're physically able to defend themselves, you know, are they bulky, are they, uh, well, are they fit, you know, even a woman, you know, a woman can be kind of fit and trim, you know, and look like she could possibly give you some help. Also, you want to look uh, at the passengers, say they have a, a short haircut and cropped high on the head, that, that might give away the possibility that uh, that person has been in the military or is in the military and could possibly have some training to help you uh, overcome the hijackers. So another thing is physical stature. So you want to make sure that so if someone's tall and, say, masculine, uh, they may wear, uh, also may wear like a shirt. See how I have my no selfie t-shirt on? Well, they may have a t-shirt on that is referring to the martial arts or anything. So that person is probably going to be trained somewhat uh, in some martial arts, or if they're not, maybe their significant other is or something like that. So those kind of people there, they would be able to help you overcome uh, someone trying to hijack your airplane. So uh, also you want to make sure that you have a mental document going on. All this time you're going to make sure that you're having a mental document of all the passengers that may be able to assist you. Because if something happens and they're trying to keep you in your chair, uh, you want to be able to assess the rest of the plane and see 
how many people look like they could possibly assist you. Uh, so you want to watch, you want to watch where they sit on the plane because if you can't move, you may have to uh, use your eyes to talk to them or maybe give them some sort of signals or whatever. And that will help them uh, know what's going on. The last thing you want to do is you want to discuss with your uh, spouse or a significant other. You want to tell them that you're trying to assess this uh, this issue. And so that they know what your plan is. So that if you start moving around erratically or doing things uh, that are questionable to them, then they will know exactly what you're doing. So, if the hijack occurs, you're going to need to assess three things, okay? I'm going to go through these three things, and then we're going to end it for today. Because I have to go into those in detail when we talk about it on Friday. So, there's three things that you want to assess in a crisis, and that is the pilot safe. Now, you can tell if the pilot's safe simply by looking up at the cockpit. If the cockpit is ajar, he's probably been compromised because I believe uh, it, since 1911, all cockpits have to be have to be locked up while they're in flight, and that gives that's so the pilots can't be overcome. But if the, for some reason there's a, the doors ajar a little bit, they may have compromised the pilot, and that's something that you have to remember. The second thing you have to uh, think about in a crisis is, is there an explosive device? Now, the best way that you can find out or assess on a quick scan of the plane, whether there's an explosive device on the plane, you could look at the terrorists. Because you're going to, when you they first stand up and announce that the plane is hijacked, at that time you're looking around to see exactly how many of them there is anyway. So... You want to look at each one of the hijackers to make sure that they don't are not holding one of those switches, you know, to blow the thing up. So the third thing you got to look for is how many hijackers are there. See, I was just telling you about that, right? You already know how many there are, so you want to see if one of them's holding that dead, that dead. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a switch to blow up the plane, to explode the things. So. Then lastly, what you want to do is you want to scan the other passengers to see if there's any threats because there could always be another terrorist or another hijacker somewhere on that airplane just sitting down watching the rest of you. So that's the three things that you have to uh, watch out for. And there's, we're still going to, we got a long ways to go here. So Friday, we're going to finish it up. I got about... Half of her done today, and that's pretty good. So I gave you some things to think about. You might, you got to make sure that the pilot's safe. You're going to make sure that there, uh, if, if there is an explosive device, you're going to look around to make sure uh, they have a switch or something to detonate it. And then you want to know how many hijackers there are. And now, if uh, this is it for today, because I got a lot to talk about, but think about this uh, overnight while. I prepare to give you the last, last of it. If you do what these guys are telling, what this guy is telling you, he's an expert survivalist. So if you do what this guy is telling you, you'll probably have a, a reasonable time subduing the terrorists. And uh, so think about that. I gave you some stuff. There's a whole list of stuff here. I want you guys to think about that. And then we'll finish it on Friday. This is, uh, I'm making this on Wednesday, so I'm going to post it on Thursday. And then Thursday I will re uh, work on the other half of it and, and present it to you on Friday. So then uh, I believe on Saturday I'll probably bring it up in the live stream so that we can discuss it. So make sure that you're watching all the way to the end so you know what the answers are when I start asking you guys. Okay, you guys know I can't do any of this without you guys. I love each and every one of you. And I apologize for running over. We're about uh, almost 10 minutes over what I usually run. So, it's uh, as you know, it's God bless you and God bless me.
God bless USA. Thanks for watching. I'll see you out there on the tube.